Hello friends, today we will study the last organ of the re female reproductive system that is the vagina. So today we will study the anatomy of the vagina. This is Dr. Yusuf signing from Maljof University. This is the only objective related to this topic that is describe the anatomy of the vagina. So it includes everything about the vagina. So we will discuss the whole anatomy of vagina here. To begin with, as you know, we have already studied that the female reproductive system consists of some organs which are primary and there are secondary organs. The main primary organ for the female reproductive system is the ovaries, a pair of ovaries and the accessory organs are the fallopian tubes or the uterine tubes, the uterus, cervix and the vagina. So we have already studied the ovary, the uterine tubes, uterus, cervix and today we will conclude with the the last part of this uh, re uh, female reproductive system that is the vagina. So vagina is uh, the other synonyms uh, word for this vagina is the colpus. Colpus means vagina. So all the uh, related terms will start with the uh, colpus. Okay. So uh, as you know this is a very important female copulatory, copulatory organ and it is a fibromuscular canal so it is the main organ of copulation and this is also the root passage for the the uh, the birth of the fetus during normal delivery so this is a fibromuscular uh, canal so if you can see here so this is the uterus here this is the cervix and here this is the the vagina so this uh, is extending from the vulva outside and up to the uterus inside or the best thing is we should say the cervix the external os of the cervix so it extends from the almost the external os even though the uh, uh, the vagina extend beyond that external os a part of the cervix is within the vagina so uh, from the cervix up to the the uh, the vulva which is exposing towards the outside Ex external world so the situation as you know it is between the bladder which is in the front as well as the lower part that is the urethra and behind we have the rectum and the anal canal so in this picture uh, those organs have not been shown in the next picture we can identify the other uh, structures which are in relation to the uh, the vagina so the size and shape uh, uh, the uh, if you see uh, this vagina it has two walls the anterior wall and the posterior wall the anterior wall is shorter compared to the posterior wall so the anterior wall is almost 7 uh, 7.5 uh, centimeters or uh, to be more specific it is 3 inches uh, but the posterior wall is uh, uh, 4 inches or 10 centimeters okay so the uh, anterior wall is one inch shorter compared to the posterior wall so the posterior wall is longer compared to the anterior wall in relation uh, the anterior wall as we already seen uh, that the upper half of the vagina is in relation to the posterior wall of the the bladder or the trigone of the bladder okay and the lower half is related to the urethra which is coming out uh, this is the uh, diagrammatic representation of the same here uh, you can see this is the cervix and above will be the uh, the uterus and here this is the vagina so the upper half is related to the bladder in the front and the lower half is related to the urethra so the same has been shown here this is the vagina here so this is the upper half that is related to the bladder and lower half related to the urethra uh, com coming to the posterior wall uh, so this is divided into four parts the upper one fourth is related uh, to a very important pouch here this is called as uh, the the recto uterine pouch or it is also called as uh, the pouch of douglas which is the most dependent uh, uh, area or pouch uh, which is most dependent when the person is erect so any fluid if there is any free fluid that will be collected in this pouch so this is called uh, the pouch of douglas or it is also called as uh, the recto uterine pouch so upper one fourth is related to this pouch and behind that will be the rectum so rectum is separated from the vagina by this recto uterine pouch in the upper one fourth 
the middle to uh, fourth is related directly to, uh, to the the posterior wall of the uh, this uh, the posterior wall of the vagina is directly related to the uh, the rectum here and it is separated just by the connective tissue uh, if you go to the lower one fourth the posterior wall of the vagina is separated from the anal canal by the perineal body as we already studied perineal body is that body uh, where all the muscles of the uh, the uh, perineum come and meet okay and that is a very important structure which will be holding the uterus which prevents the prolapse of the uterus uh, uh, this is about the the posterior wall and there are also lateral walls uh, which are held by the ligaments we already studied the ligaments uh, which are there for the the cervix as well as the uterus and the same will might extend to some extent by uh, to the vagina also so we have the anterior wall and the posterior wall and the lateral walls of the vagina uh, apart from the uh, walls anterior wall and posterior wall if you see the anterior wall uh, inside the cavity uh, so uh, there is the part of the cervix is as i said before will be slightly projected into the cavity of the vagina itself and this makes some space and this space is uh, in the anterior between anterior wall and the cervix there is a small space this is called as the anterior phonics so it's a groove in the interior of the upper end of the vagina which is converted into a circular groove by the protruding cervix so it is a small gap between the anterior wall and the cervix this is called as the anterior phonix so similarly we have a phonix behind that is called as the posterior phonix between the the uh, posterior wall of the uh, vagina and the cervix this is called as uh, the, the posterior uh, phonix so the anterior phonix is much more shallow as you can see here it is much more shallow and the posterior uh, cervix is uh, posterior phonix is much more deep as you can see here it is much more deep as uh, the posterior wall is longer as well as it goes beyond to a much larger uh, uh, upper extent compared to the the uh, the anterior wall so that's why the posterior phonics is much more deeper and the anterior phonics is much more shallow and apart from those anti and posterior phonics there are also the lateral phonics on either side we have uh, lateral phonics these are very important especially for examination if you can see here when you put the speculum into the uh, the vagina uh, uh, that is called as uh, the vaginal speculum then you can see these phonics always these phonics should be examined uh, from the anterior phonic the posterior phonic as well as the lateral phonics for any growth or uh, something like that any uh, change in the color as well as infections as well as any uh, uh, pus or blood is oozing out for all those uh, any scar marks everything you have to examine the phonics so phonics is nothing but the uh, the small space between the cervix and the walls so there is anterior phonics posterior phonics as well as the lateral phonics coming to the blood supply the blood supply um, for the vagina is by the vaginal arteries which are branches of the internal iliac artery these are the main arteries supplying the the vagina these are the vaginal branches of the internal iliac artery apart from that even uh, some uh, art branches from the cervical vaginal branches of the uterine artery as well as the middle rectal as well as the internal pudendal artery they give small branches and all these branches join together in the front as well as in the back of the vagina to form vaginal zygous arteries one is the anterior vaginal zygous artery and the posterior so these are the two midline arteries which are formed in front as well as the back of the vagina by the anastomosis of the vaginal branch of the internal iliac artery as well as the cervico vaginal branch of the uterine artery as well as the branches from the rectal middle rectal as well as the internal pudendal arteries all these will anastomose in the front as well as back to form a midline vessel called as the vaginal zygous artery in the front as well as back coming to the venous drainage venous drainage is by plexus of veins around the vagina and they are called as the vaginal venous plexus and they will be draining into the internal iliac veins by the vaginal veins okay 
coming to the lymphatic drainage uh, this is uh, again uh, divided into upper one third middle one third as well as lower one third this is very important especially whenever there are carcinomas or any growth uh, uh, what exactly are the lymph nodes which you are supposed to examine so if it is for the lower most which is toward the the skin then it will be draining into the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes because it is from the skin and the um, uh, neighboring structure so the lower one third is will be the neighboring structure around the the skin so it will be draining into the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes if it is into the uh, if there is any uh, carcinoma in the middle one third then it will be draining into the or any infection or carcinoma then it will be draining into the internal iliac group of lymph node and if there is any infection then uh, in the upper one third then it will be draining into the external iliac group of lymph node so the vagina is divided into upper one third middle one third and lower one third uh, based on the lymphatic drainage and that that's why uh, it is very important because of the if there are any infections or growth confined to the one particular area uh, then you can definitely examine those specific group of lymph nodes to uh, make sure that it is that in the area only involved Coming to the nerve supply, uh, it is by the again uh, by the lower one third of the vagina. It will be pain sensitive because it is toward the skin uh, uh, into the perineum. So it will be supplied by the pudendal nerve. And the upper two thirds are pain insensitive and they are supplied by the autonomic nervous system, both by the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic components. And the sympathetic component will be from L1 and L2, and the parasympathetic will be S2 and S3. Usually for all the other perineal organs, uh, like we have seen that uh, in the uterus or the fallopian tube, it will be S2, S3 and S4. But here it will be only uh, the parasympathetic component will be only S2 and S3. No S4 is there. And these are derived as vaginal nerves from the inferior hypogastric as well as the uterovaginal plexus. And then they will be supplying the, uh, the vagina. Uh, and uh, the sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictors and the parasympathetic nerves are vasodilators okay so this is about the nerve supply of the vagina coming to the uh, the final part that is the applied anatomy uh, the most commonest is the the infection of the vagina as well as the inflammation of the vagina this is because this is the copulatory organ as well as it is near the perineum so the infections are more common uh, in this part of the uh, female reproductive system so vaginitis is a very common uh, uh, symptom with which the female will be uh, presenting with uh, usually it will be liquoria white is a discharge or some pain or something like that okay so vaginitis is nothing but the inflammation and infection of the vagina the second important applied anatomy of the vagina is the prolapse of the uh, vagina itself. So sometimes uh, as we have seen that uh, there are important structures which will be holding the uterus in its position and they are primary and secondary supports and the primary supports are the most important for the, uh, the uh, to prevent prolapse. Uh, but uh, sometimes if uh, the primary supports uh, are damaged then there might be prolapse. So the prolapse will be not only uh, the prolapse of the bladder into the vagina. So all these structures actually it is not the prolapse of the vagina itself but the prolapse of other structures like the prolapse of the uterus, prolapse of the bladder or the prolapse of the rectum which are uh, all around it. The, uh, the cervix and the uh, uterus is on the top of it so it might prolapse into the vagina sometimes the bladder might prolapse into the vagina or the rectum which is behind might prolapse into the vagina itself so vagina is the site where the prolapse will be taking place okay so uh, that's why the prolapse sh uh, should be uh, seen and that can be prevented if the uh, the perineal body as well as the pelvic diaphragm are stronger as well as other primary and secondary supports mainly the primary one the third most important uh, uh, applied anatomy of vagina is the neoplasms there are chances of uh, neoplasms uh, within the the vagina the most commonest uh, in the uh, female will be the the uh, the uh, the carcinoma of the cervix then the uh, the uh, the breast 
uh, then there are other also carcinomas like the, of the vagina even though the vagina uh, carcinomas are uh, lesser but still uh, it is one of the uh, causes where it can be uh, usually it will be malignant than the benign one uh, whenever there are carcinomas or if you want to do uh, surgeries for prolapse or something like that then uh, you have to cut and open the vagina that is called as the colpotomy whenever we cut and remove uh, not remove exactly to cut and do some procedures uh, uh, then it is called as colpotomy and colporaphe is the uh, the correction of the uh, damage in this case if you can see in this uh, uh, picture you can see there is prolapse of the the bladder itself into the vagina so now it has been corrected it, the uh, the wall has been uh, been getting repaired and it is getting uh, uh, stretched here so this is called as colporaphe whenever you do some corrections on the vaginal wall then it is called as the colporaphe and colpotomy is just cutting uh, or giving incision to the uh, the vagina. Uh, uh, vaginal lacerations are very common as I said before because it is the copulatory organ as well as uh, it is more towards the uh, the uh, perineum. So there are chances of uh, uh, vagina getting damaged and there might be lacerations within the vagina. Lacerations are just small cuts within the vagina itself. And the uh, coming to the vaginal examination, it is a very important component of the whenever you examine a female patient. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, the vaginal examination is done by uh, putting a speculum. This is called as the vaginal speculum. So this is the vaginal speculum which is put and uh, and the vagina uh, as well as even the cervix uh, is examined. This is the position. This is called as the lithotomy position where the push, uh, patient is put and then uh, the uh, vagina as well as the cervix will be examined okay so this is called as uh, the vaginal speculum this is the instrument here so this is about the some of the important clinical aspects related to the vagina so if you have any doubts regarding this you can definitely write to me and i will try to answer so these are my references thank you very much If you like this uh, video you can definitely click the like button and if you want more of these kind of videos to be seen or if you want regular updates uh, from me uh, regarding the uh, any uh, anatomy topic then you can definitely subscribe to my channel to get regular updates thank you very much